Hello, I'm Michael Rickards. I'm the executive director of the Hall Institute of Public Policy, and this is our TV Forum. Today we have an old friend. We've had her on before, Andrea Critch. Welcome. It's good to have you again. Good to see you again, Mike. Tell us what you did last time you were here. Last time I was talking about homelessness and affordable housing, and I've changed people careers. Love, people love that, by yes, the way. Yes, uh, they love it. and they Good response that was from nice. our people. We really appreciate it. You're executive here. director now of the United Cerebral Palsy right. of Northern, Central, and South New Jersey. That's correct. Why don't you just call yourselves... Uh, of New Jersey. Cover well, Hall, it's a part we don't know. We, we don't would cover. we would love to do that. We are an affiliate of National UCP, and they gave us the name because there is a United Cerebral Palsy in Hudson County. Oh, there is. So if I said of New Jersey, that would kind of take, take away his away ter territory. We're probably going to change it again, but um, we really do focus in on the central and northern New Jersey. What made you think about moving from the homeless? to cerebral palsy. Well, it You've was, guys got a great career I did. In, the so, in the social services um, over the last over 30, 30 years. Over 30 some odd years yeah. I've been working in social services. I don't want services. to say how many years, but I... Well, I'll say it because, yeah. you know, we get fixed. <laughs> but um, I, I um, thought this would be a good challenge. Um, I had been getting a little stale and um, after 15 years, I was approached and offered this position. And I thought it would be a good opportunity as I go toward retirement um, to work for this agency that does incredible work. You've raised over $5 million. In, in my career. That's incredible. It uh, is. Number. God it bless is. you. Do you want to see the gray hair? <laughs> no. I got enough of my own. Right. Um, tell me a little bit about what exactly is cerebral palsy? You know, um, United Cerebral Palsy really deals with all developmental disabilities and all disabilities. So it isn't, it used to be that we focused primarily on folks with cerebral palsy, which is caused by brain damage in, in birth. Oh, it's and, birth. Right. It, there is some lack of oxygen to the brain, and then whatever part of the brain is affected by that lack of oxygen is where you get the um, outward appearance of the cerebral of the palsy. It's actually a constriction of the muscles and nerves. But we have expanded our services to all developmental disabilities or all div disabilities. So we um, have a huge population of folks that we treat with autism, which is um, just exploding, unfortunately, in numbers. Spina bifida. Um, traumatic brain disorder. So anything that would impact someone's physical capacity and their being able to provide for themselves or have to be in a wheelchair, non-ambulatory, we would provide services. Now, uh, do you work through local agencies or do you have your own infrastructure? I am the agency. You are the I don't, agency. I don't mess with other people. No. <laughs> um, we, we do provide, we're the direct service provider. We're not like a state agency, we're an agency, nonprofit agency, that I have over 100 staff, and we serve about 1,500 people a year with, throughout the central and northern region of New Jersey. Now, what are your major fundraisers? You said that you've raised a considerable amount of money over your right. career. What's the major um, source of your funding now, besides the state, I assume. Well, unfortunately, it is the state. They're, they pay half of our budget through the Division on Developmental Disabilities. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other funding, the other, I would say, two-thirds comes from county or municipal funding, and then the rest is through fund development. So we're doing a walkathon. We yes, do I a, saw that. Right, we're doing a general appeal. I have a fabulous fund development director. Your, your, your development director Ann is uh, Ann Geller. One of my favorite people yes. who was with us. Exactly. Ann, Ann Geller. Right, She's right. She's got a lot of enthusiasm and deep dedication. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. I'm kind of interested if, um, uh, if I were an individual or I were running, let's say, a small community agency, right. and I were interested in getting funds from you, how would I go about that? We don't provide funds. You provide services. We provide services. So okay. we're a nonprofit agency. We have a full complement of services that we offer to families and consumers. 
So we have a lot of independent and community support services. So we're able to help support people with disabilities and their families who are living in the community. Um, and we work mostly with teens up through older adults. So we have a Teen Beat program, which um, provides a weekly um, meeting of adolescents and they go out to dinner and they just talk about stuff and it's a nice support. We do um, employment training for um, young people and adults. Um, we help them get a skill so that they can go out and earn a living. And it's not a sheltered workshop. We are going to teach them some kind of employment skills. And then we're going to work with them to try and find employment. And then we would support them in their employment. So we would be the intermediary between the employer and the employee. Um, so we have a wider range of independent and community supports. We also do um, pre-service training. We are the state provider of training for anybody who works with people with disabilities. So we do training before you can work with folks with disabilities. So you train the trainers. Yes, yes, and the direct service people. Another division. Who makes up your faculty? Uh, we have one person who is our trainer, and she is wonderful. Uh, she's been doing it for 30 years, so she has a breadth of knowledge. The other division that we have is for respite. A lot of caretakers have no uh, extended family to provide support. It is a very demanding um, thing that you have to deal with folks who may need 24-7 care. Uh, the caregivers get worn down. And then we have aging caregivers who have adult children living with them. So we provide a number of different respite services. We have out of home respite service where we take the consumer out of the home and we do activities with them for a weekend or for four days. That gives the caretaker time to do their own thing or sleep late or just take it easy. Um, we provide in-home stress bit where a paid professional will go in and work with the consumer so that the caretaker can run errands, go to the doctor, take care of their business. Um, and then we do housing. I'm back in my housing business Good. because I, it's still my first love. And um, we provide group homes for people with disabilities who need 24-7 coverage. We have, um, and that's in Somerset County, we have two independent living programs where we have four adults in two different homes who can live independently but are disabled. And then we have a supported housing program in Hunterton County where we built this brand new, totally green project called The Meadows. And that's for um, folks who have any kind of disability. So it could be a mental health as well as a physical disability. I think we have one like that in Hamilton. I think you do, yes. I, I happened yes. to be on a bus once that, that went around that route. And right. I, I noticed that they had right. um, many people who were, I think the whole village was right. devoted to people with various yes. sorts of that's what this is. Do you do anything with faith, faith-based organizations? We are reaching out. Um, that's one of the changes that we're making. Um, this was an agency that's founded back in the 80s. And, you know, when you're doing the same thing day after day, you get a little stale. So uh, they reached out to me to do, make some changes. So we are reaching out. Uh, we, we work with a number of other referring agencies. We work with Local United Ways. We work with other agencies that deal with disabilities. We collaborate with them um, so that w we have, a matter of fact, our holiday party is going to be at the Presbyterian Church right across <coughs> from our office on this Sunday. So, yes, we work with the faith community. They're very involved. So you're kind of the public face of the uh, Well, I'm one of them. Of the, of yeah. the group. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who's on your board? Do you have a, a local governing board? Uh, yes, as a nonprofit, you have to have, have, a, to have you have to have a board of directors. Um, we have some very um, dynamic and committed folks who have been uh, involved in the field for a long time. Uh, we have a lawyer. We have someone from the Marstown School District. We have an organizational development person. Um, we have. 
uh, someone coming on board who uh, started one of the local banks up in Morris County. So we, we have a nice breath. I'm trying to build and get more people on the board. So it's, it's a good group. Now you have, uh, your, your center is up in the Morristown area. Uh, the main office you is know, in Chester, yes. You know, um, if you're a statewide agency, should it move, move to, to maybe New Brunswick, um, in the middle of the state? Well, it really is a misnomer. We're not a statewide organization. Um, again, our national told us to use that name. Um, but our services are really centered around Central Jersey and North Jersey. So we're, we serve um, Hunterton, Somerset, Morris, Morris, Middlesex, Passaic, Warren, Sussex, Bergen. Um, we do have you programs. Do, do you do Mercer? Um, we haven't done anything in Mercer, but there would, there would be nothing to preclude us from doing mm -hmm. it. The administrative office is in Chester, but the services are delivered out in the field. Uh, the so field. The, it doesn't really matter where the office is. Uh, the staff, as I said, we have over 100 staff, and about 45 are the people who are the direct service. So we call them support professionals. So they're out in the field, and they're in, you know, they go all over. Where are you going in the next 10 years, the organization? Well, that's a good question. We're actually putting together... All questions do master plan. It's right. Strategic Exa planning. Strategic planning. We're, we're actually uh, going to be doing a strategic planning retreat in the first quarter of 2012. Um, and what we want to do is evaluate what does the environment look like vis-a-vis -vis the economy, funding right. streams, right. But more importantly, what is the need as, as the consumer and the families identify it? Um, so we will definitely continue to focus on the services, the independent and community supports, because that allows consumers to still stay at home or live in housing and be supported in the community. And it keeps them from becoming institutionalized, which um, for only the most severe cases of disability, I believe people should try to be living in the community. We want to look at developing um, a business. We want to become ourselves more self-reliant and, and raising our own money by developing a business concern that would employ our consumers and generate a nice living for them, give them a sense of confidence, self-esteem, earning their own living, being able to live in the community, as well as providing an income stream for the agency and providing, hopefully, a service that is needed. Sort of the goodwill model? Yeah, something like that. There are um, UCP agencies all over the country who um, are doing lots of wonderful businesses. One of our affiliates down in Arkansas is, um, I believe it's Walmart or Kmart headquarters are in Arkansas. Walmart. Yeah. Walmart, thank you. And their agency does all their recycling. So they started oh. with one truck, they now have 15 trucks. And they go in and they take all the recycling, oh, they sort it, they get it out. Um, and it's generating wonderful revenue, which then affords the agency to provide more services and not be reliant on state funds or federal funds. Well, when you're doing that, uh, as you finish your strategic plan, yes, your vision statement, whatever you want to call it, right? Maybe uh, when you finish that uh, next year, 2012, yeah. you can bring three or four people. We'll come and do a roundtable here oh, with you. I would love to do that. And, uh, that would be fabulous. You can use it for whatever purpose. That you would want. be terrific. Really, that would be very interesting for us to right. see the metamorphosis of right. an organization right. because we're looking at what we call hometown solutions. Oh, we want wonderful. to know, and not what the governor is doing, we want to know what's right. happening in the communities. Right. And I think that, that that would be a wonderful approach for us to be doing a round table right. with you. Oh, I would and love to that. to ask you how you moved from a vision statement right. to the objectives. Right. And, and most importantly, which I think is critical because we don't do enough of that in nonprofit. How do you measure whether you're successful or not? Well, you know, the funders have really pushed for, that. Uh, mm -hmm. for instead of funding programs, they're funding for results. results. So we have mm -hmm. developed a very strong outcome measurement tool. So we know going into a program, we develop what outcomes we want to see 
then we measure, then you them. measure them. Right, we've done right, that. Right, right. Even at the Royal Institute of Public Policy. Excellent. It's a good way I'm of going. I'm not going to tell you what the outcomes were, but uh, <laughs> okay, it. it's actually it's very it, useful. No, it for, is a good model for me. It's, it's become a, a useful yeah, tool yeah, yeah. to see where we're going. People yeah. say, "Where, are you, where are you going this right. year? What are you going to do?" And say, sure. "Here it is. Here's what we're doing." Right. And right. We, here's what, what what type of support we think we need. Right. What is the role of parents in your operation? Well, um, we have a very strong um, uh, community with our families. Um, we have one of our program is called Family Options, and it's a program where we get families together with their child, whether it's a young child or an adult child, and they plan activities together. They can share their concerns. They, they're kind of in the same boat. They have the same issues. And so um, we have a number of parent representatives on our board. We are getting a number of parent representatives on our fund development committee mm. because those are the people that have Pretty the passion. Yeah. You, I mean, I can talk about it. I don't know what it feels like to live with a person who has a disability, what the stressors are every day, day in and day out. So having parents represent us. Um, I would like to develop a speakers bureau where we have parents going out and talking in the community, doing outreach and education, and meeting with other community groups as well as other parents of folks with disabilities to talk about their common concerns. They are who really started UCP in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It was started by a group of parents who couldn't find services and didn't know where to find support, so they came together, they decided what they needed, and they went out and got it. So there is strength in numbers, and there's strength when you are representing the actual population that needs service. I don't understand your relationship with the national group. Um, it's very easy. Um, the national, we pay dues to the national. Right. We use their logo. We use their website. They provide technical support to us. Um, they're very important in providing us literature, um, key policy issues. They will write white papers. They will help us access some of our legislators, both in state and in Washington. So that's our national connection. Could you send us, we'll, we'll put it up on our website, okay. a major report that they've done. Okay. Maybe analyzing the whole question right. of CP services. Okay. Every state has a state association? No, no. Um, every state has a un local United Cerebral Palsy agency. Right. Um, but not every age, like there is in Middlesex County, there's Cerebral Palsy Association. That's not part of United Cerebral Palsy. Um, to be UCP and use their logo, you have to be a member. There are a number of different agencies that deal with other disabilities and cerebral palsy, but are not affiliated with the national organization. Are they helpful in getting you federal funding? No, they don't do fundraising, no. They give us technical support. Okay, you don't have anybody that speaks on the federal level, any lobbyists? Or well, no, we're not allowed to do that because we're a 501c3. We're not allowed to lobby. That's part of our um, federal status as a nonprofit. Um, you're only allowed to do like 20% of your right. salary can go to, actually it's called advocacy, not lobbying. Right, right, right. But no, we don't. Um, national can lobby. That's what they do, but they do that on the federal level for the broader perspective of people with disabilities. So you do have a lobbyist yep. then, who's yes. speaking on your behalf. Right, right, right. Watching the legislation. And Absolutely, and their office is in Washington, D.C., so they're right, right there. Right there, yeah. right there. Yeah, within walking distance. Now, I've distance. had you on twice, and I've always been impressed by your immense enthusiasm for what you're doing. And you've talked about the fact that you've been involved for... 30 years in, in, uh, in these sorts of activities. Right. Do you ever, at the end of the day, get weary? No. No, because if I did, I would leave. I don't get weary. Um, this, you know, people have a passion in life. This is my passion. My passion is to help folks who can't help themselves totally, to help train them and to work with them to become more self-sufficient. 
but if they can't, to see what their service needs are and help them get that. I love that. I love getting out into the community. I love meeting folks like you and other people who are also in the community. Um, it's just it's just my thing. It's a social justice. How did you get involved in that? You know, sometimes things happen. Um, All of a sudden you're 25 years old and... <laughs> Gee, I wish I was 25 years old again. Oh, all of a sudden you were 25 years old. <laughs> well, you know, I graduated college with a degree in teaching and decided I didn't want to teach you from? Uh, from Michigan State Michigan University. State, then. Okay, Lansing, and Lansing. In Lansing, Michigan. Okay, and you're walking around Lansing and you're deciding. I said, what do, do I want to do when I grow up? And I, and I got a job at, at a social service agency oh, you did. Okay. as a caseworker. And I loved it. Loved it. And then as I worked there, I loved doing more of the administration. And that's because I felt you can serve just so many people as a case manager, but as a director or someone in charge, you get the opportunity to plan programs, develop services, get out there and have a wider contact and, and wider impact. So that's how I did it. Ms. Critch, you're an extraordinary woman. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you for much. coming back again to the Hall Institute's TV Forum. And I hope you'll come and learn more. You'll have her address under her name. You'll see it on our, as, we, as you play our, uh, our recording here. And we hope you'll get in contact with her and her friends and see what you can do to make life a little bit easier for the people. Thank you very much.